Alrighty guys, lots of people have asked me to do a video about QQQI. This is Spy Eye's evil sister. This is another Neo's product. Just a reminder, if you ever have any video requests, just make sure to let me know in the comments below and I might possibly just get to it. You know, that list is getting quite large these days just because a new income ETF seems to come out every single week and it gets all the buzz. So is this QQQI, is this really as good as SPYI and all these other hot income ETFs out there these days? Let's find out. All right, so let's get a little bit more information about NEO's NASDAQ 100 high income ETF, QQQI. By the way, a lot of this video is just a Sparknotes version of an interview I watched of my good friend, Armchair Income. He actually had one of the co-founders on on his channel. So this is just me taking notes and then also just kind of giving my reaction to it as well. If you want a lot more info about this fund, go check out his video after watching this one. So QQQI's main goal is to produce income. Its main goal is to generate that income around that 10 to 12% range every single year. So we'll talk about how exactly they do this, but they also aim to be tax efficient. So that's what kind of sets some of the NEO's products apart is that they hope to be tax efficient by taking advantage of Section 1256 contracts. That means 60% of their distributions will be long-term, 40% will be short-term. That's gonna be on those distributions, that, that dividend income, and that's really gonna help the shareholder in the long-term you won't have to give as much of your hard-earned money to Uncle Sam so they can go spend it on stupid things. It's more money in your pocket, so you're hopefully not spending it on stupid things. So they also do a return of capital, but, but this is not the bad kind of return on capital or rock where the fund doesn't actually make money, so they're just giving you back part of their principal investment. Uh, this is a different type of rock that takes advantage, again, of that Section 1256 contracts and is just tax efficient for the shareholder. So QQQI, it also gives a chance at some capital appreciation. So they're able to harvest monthly dividends by selling covered calls. So they're able to get those juicy monthly dividends by selling covered calls. So this gives them some chance at capital appreciation. So they're going to be doing covered calls actually on the NDX index. This is what they're doing call options on. And they specifically choose this index because this is what they get preferential tax treatment. Now on the side, they're also purchasing all the companies in the index. That's where we get that chance at some of this capital appreciation. Most of you are probably familiar with what the NASDAQ 100 is. It's a lot of innovative technology companies. So this includes companies like Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, Facebook, Broadcom, QQQI, you're also getting exposure to these companies. And those companies that I just mentioned, those alone make up a huge chunk of the NASDAQ 100 just because of how large their market cap is. But it's not all just big tech. About 50% of it is other companies such as Costco. All right, so with covered calls, right, we're getting that premium, those juicy premiums, but then we're also giving away some of that upside. That's why we have a chance at some capital appreciation, but we're not gonna experience all of the gains in a bull market. So based on the interview, it sounds like they're doing 1.5 to 4.5% out of the money call options on a monthly basis. At maximum, they might do six to seven weeks out just to get as much premium as possible. And a lot of people have been asking me this in the comments, and it's a great question. It's essentially what percentage of the actual portfolio are they writing those covered calls on? They say they are writing covered calls on 70 to 80% of the portfolio. So it's still leaving some potential for that upside, but also most, the vast majority of it is going toward getting those juicy dividends. So moving on here, the options, they always get settled with cash. They don't actually execute. And they have the option to buy calls in their back pocket when volatility is very decompressed. This is more of a risk management tool to be able to get some upside. On the flip side of that, they this could actually hurt the dividends since they're using premiums to buy those options. So just a difference between SPY I and QQQI is obviously just the underlying equity that they're doing it on, right? The SPY I is gonna be tracking the S&P 500. QQQI is gonna be tracking the NASDAQ 100. The NASDAQ is just inherently more volatile, right? It has a lot of big tech companies. 
innovation, right? It's always going to be changing. There's going to be a lot of optimism, lots of new products like AI, a lot of hype, things that might not live up to their full potential. So just inherently, that's going to be more riskier. But on the flip side, that's a lot more volatile. That's a chance at more premiums. And that's why QQQI, it might actually have a higher dividend yield as time progresses, as it's doing its options plays, just because of how much more volatile the NASDAQ is. But other than that, essentially, they're doing the same strategy as SPY I. So they're going to aim for about a 1% distribution a month target. That's pretty similar to SPY I. But as we talked about, because of the underlying equity, we're going to get a little bit more yield. But just remember, with higher yield comes higher risk. Despite what some fools in this community say, there is definitely risk in any sort of investment. Getting high yields like this comes at an expense. And then, of course, we always have to keep in mind NAV erosion, right? Of When I'm buying my income ETFs, I don't want the amount that the dividend gets paid out every month to just come from the NAV. I, I want the NAV to either, one, be going up or to the NAV to just maintain, right? If I'm getting those juicy dividends, I don't want to see my principal investment fall down each month. Otherwise, what's the point of investing in these income ETFs? Now, one of the fund managers, they did say that if they make more than 1% in any given month, they do have the option to reinvest that back into the fund, and that helps not erode that NAV over time. And there's potentially lower volatility owning QQQI versus owning the triple Qs, just because of the income generated by triple QI, that may actually provide for chances of outperformance in mildly bullish or bearish environments. Let's look at some other info for triple QI. It does have a 68 basis points expense ratio, which is a little bit on the higher end. But at the same time, guys, these are actively managed ETFs. It's not as simple as just owning the S&P 500 and calling it a day, right? These are actively managed. They're actual experts with years and decades of experience. We're in a way paying for their expertise. That's why the expense ratio is so high. Of course, these people need to make their money too. Again, expense ratios, they really can eat into the returns over long periods of time. So just be mindful of these expense ratios, especially with a big basket of income ETFs. You're going to be paying a lot in fees and maybe just don't realize it. This is a relatively brand new fund, right? So they only have $75 million in assets under management. I expect that number to keep going up. I have a feeling that number is going to go way up after all the free publicity from this video. All right, now let's take a look at their performance so far. So this fund was only launched at the end of January. It didn't start trading until February 2nd. So in that short time span, a little over two months now, they are actually up 1.12%. The triple Qs or the NASDAQ is up 2.67% and the S&P 500 or SPY is up 4.87%. So we can see they've actually done a little bit worse when we're talking strictly capital appreciation. And that again is because they're giving up some of that upside in exchange for those premiums, those juicy monthly dividend payments. But if we take into account their two dividends that they have paid so far as an ETF, we do get a very impressive 14.17% annualized yield. So again, guys, this isn't some sort of magic beans investment. It's not free money, right? As we can clearly see on the screen, there is some risk. There is some trade-offs. And these are all things that investors need to keep in mind. QQQI so far has done pretty good, but the market as a whole has also done very well. And I think the true test is really seeing how these ETFs perform during a downward market and seeing how much of that recovery they pick up. But one sector I'm feeling super high about is cybersecurity. Check out why I'm so bullish right here. Also see my full $180,000 portfolio and all my weekly trades in the link below. Be sure to like and comment on this video for the algorithm to help out a small time YouTuber. Let me know what you think of QQQI in the comments below. Remember, my videos are always found in podcast form under the Collect Cash podcast name. Thank you to all my Patreons and I will cash you later. That sector, you are an idiot.